Welcome back, this is Yama Jack. Today we got Gunslinger Desolation Suicidal, and yesterday, like the whole video thing, it's just going terribly, but yesterday, I had, uh, not recorded anything. First it was, I got distracted normal. typing a little bit, and it would have been a day when I would have been like, ah, yeah, you know, I got distracted, I'll try not to do it again, and, uh, you know, I recorded two shorter episodes, but I didn't have to do that. I had, I had two full-length episodes. Now, the other problem that I have to work on is uh, consistently getting them up. That's kind of caused by um, this new, like, um, sort of habit that I'm, I'm working on, make recording three a day instead of two a day. Uh, it's changing the whole, like, workflow, right? And it's it's confusing me, and it's hard to work with, and I'm, like, panicking and, and stuff. Um, so that'll come as well. I'm almost kind of, like consistent with it. I know it doesn't look like it on your side, but on my side we're nearly there. Um, so we're, we're almost to the point where we'll be having two episodes a day at the same time, every day consistently, uh, which will be very, very nice. Uh, but it was nice yesterday to just be like, you know, today I don't really want to record. I want to just keep typing and then just do it, you know? And uh, unfortunately, I'd only done two days of this three episodes a day thing, so I only had you know, two episodes of backlog, which is exactly as many as it would have taken anyway, so like, I'm kind of now down to ground zero, but, you know, a better ground zero, right? And uh, I'll continue to record three a day, every day, for, for probably quite a while, because I'll probably be doing that quite often, just being like, you know what, I don't want to record today. And then, uh, it's like every third day I don't have to record if I don't want to, with this kind of setup, right? If I record for like two weeks or whatever like this, then I can just take a week off, you know, like, like it's it's very motivating, I guess, because I, I can I can take that time off and I can work on, you know, whatever I need to do and, and do whatever I need to do. And it's, it's all very, very good, very pleasant stuff. So I like it. But uh, it's, it's going to be probably a, another day or two um, until the uh, videos are going up at the right time and like consistently and all that and actually getting like scheduled and stuff probably another day or two and then we'll be good so so by the time this video goes up I'm thinking uh, by the time this video goes up or maybe the next one or the one after that probably I'm, I'm thinking it'll be consistent from that point onwards um, so you know, for me right now it's it doesn't really show anything on your side but I think by the time this video goes up you'll be able to to see that it is improved I'm hoping, but we're, we're, we're making progress, we're making changes, we're doing things, and it's happening. Feels good. It's, 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 a uh, it's peace of mind, you know? I have to sneeze. Oh, but the sneeze isn't coming, but it just feels like it is, but it's not going to come, I know it's not. Uh, it just feels, just feels like I need to sneeze. It's, it's peace of mind, though, you know? To, uh... To have those backlog videos and and be able to be like yeah you know like if I miss a day if I don't feel like recording one day whatever then it, it's good it's not like I'm surprised that it's good because that's what we used to do right like we used to have weekends off I used, I used to take the uh, the Saturdays and Sundays off completely and I'd, I'd make sure that I had all the videos recorded for that um, and then I'd have like Monday done as well so I'd have like quite a bit of a backlog um, come like Friday and then I'd be able to take the weekends off and enjoy my, my time to myself without having to worry about any kind of responsibilities or obligations or anything like that and just kind of enjoy my weekends. Not that I don't enjoy recording as well, but uh, you know, especially back then there was there was a lot more that I was doing uh, and it was it was fairly overwhelming if I didn't get my weekends at least. Um, I enjoyed it, but it was, it was a lot. And I liked it, but it was a lot. And I want to add in a lot more. Again, because it was fun and I liked it. It was just, it was just, there was just a lot. Um, so, yeah, I, I I know from experience how nice it is to have that backlog and and have that knowledge that even if something goes wrong today or tomorrow, or whatever, the videos are still going to be fine. They're not going to be affected by it. It feels really, really good to have that. I knew it would. That's why I, I made the effort to to get back into uh, recording excess. Um. But, you know, even still, it, it does feel good. It does feel really good. It feels really, really nice to have the uh, 
the video is being recorded and, and backlogged and all that. It was already useful. We'll just toss this right here, I think. Lure him around this way, and that should get him. I don't want to waste my ammunition on something I already threw a grenade at, you know? I'd rather waste uh, health. I get health back. I don't get ammunition back. I say as I miss shots. That's why I need to conserve my ammunition, okay? Because I'm going to miss them anyway. <laughs> I love Zed Time, man. Zed, like, sometimes Zed Time is boring because you're just like, well, I'll just wait around for a moment because there's nothing to shoot. But then sometimes Zed Time pops and it's just like, oh, yeah. This is, this is why you play KF2. This is why it's, like, one of the greatest games ever made. Because you just you get to feel like such a badass. And man, does it feel good. It is pleasant. I haven't installed my hard drive yet. I, was, I said I was going to do that like yesterday or something, but... I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just work, and I'm like, do I wanna? No. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'll install it maybe tomorrow. I really do need to do it because it's like a major pain in the butt not having the. Uh, hello, I thought you were like farther down, but you're just a crawler. It's a major pain in the butt not having it installed because I keep running out of disk space. Like, if we look right now, I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to look for myself. I have 61 gigs free of 931. Like that's that's how much space I have basically on my computer. <laughs> Just like for 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 for, for recordings. It's not much. We'll not be back, um thanks to you. It's pretty brutal. Especially considering like each video is like 7 8 9 10 gigs easy. The files take up a lot of size because I record in MKV and then I uh, transcode them to MP4 immediately afterwards. Um, I do that because Black Magic or DaVinci Resolve. Black Magic Design makes DaVinci Resolve. Um, but uh, that, that, that program that I use, they can't, it can't read MKV. Um, but if you record to MP4 and like the recording gets stopped for some reason because you know you run out of disk space, your computer crashes, whatever, um, then your file's gone. You know, like if something happens in the middle of an MP4 file, you lose you lose the whole thing. Like it's 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 reliant on having all of the frames there accurately. Whereas MKV is like yeah whatever if you lose a few frames you're not like it's not the end of the world. Um, if you, if you get, like, you know, cut out in the middle of it or whatever, like, it's fine. You won't, you won't lose everything. You'll still have whatever you recorded, right? Um, so then this way, if I'm, like, recording an episode or something, and then my computer crashes partway through, uh, particularly for, like, Minecraft videos or RuneScape or something like that, that's more, uh, edited stuff, um, then I still have whatever I was recording. And sometimes that can be, like, three, four hours of footage. Um, before my computer would actually like crash, you know, like it could be a lot of footage and a lot of progress, and then uh, you know, computer crashes. And if I was recording 10 before, all of that would have been lost. But since I'm recording to MKV, I just have to go and like transcode it manually um, with like FM FFmpeg uh, instead of doing the, uh, the OBS automatic stuff. And then I still have that footage. I didn't lose anything, you know? Um, and then the uh, the MP4 files are uh, are readable by DaVinci Resolve, so then I can I can edit the videos there. Uh, so I don't have to be doing it for KF2 videos, but it's like too much of a pain to switch back and forth for the recordings that I do want it for and the recordings that I don't. So I just leave it, but then it takes up a lot more disk space. Like, it takes up a lot of disk space even without it, you know? Like, 10 gigs at a high for a KF2 episode, right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe like medium, honestly. Um, I still like five gigs <laughs> for for like just the one, right? 
Like, it's, it's, it still takes up a lot of space. It's not like it just solves the problem anyway, so. Go kill some Zeds. We'll have to, we'll have to get it installed. It's like a six terabyte hard drive that I got sitting there, so that'll last a while. A long, long while. It would be nice to have. I don't like fighting the Patriarch down here because he has so many places to run. And they have so, like, many turns and stuff. And they're, they're, like, they're like the grid places to run, you know? Uh-oh. That's dangerous. Okay. I had, to, I had to make a quick little dodge there to, to not get just destroyed. <laughs> Whew. Money, anyone? I'm playing MapleStory, you know, as, uh, as I've talked about. Um... Is that what I want to talk about? No, no, no. We'll talk about that one next time. This time, I had a dream the other night. Uh, it was it was a weird dream, okay? So, in the dream, I had bought a boat, a uh, sailboat, and I was taking it out uh, with a friend. So, a friend was going to come live on it with me. Uh, for a little while, he and I were going to kind of sail around uh, the Pacific Northwest together and um, so we bought the boat over in like a weird theme park in Vancouver and it was in like a little like man-made lake <clears throat> in the theme park right so it was like I, I don't know why this is where the boat was or like whatever but like this is where it was okay it was in this man-made lake in a theme park um, so we bought the boat there, and uh, then we like sailed it a little ways. Well, then we really sail, you know, in, in in this kind of place you, you typically motor. Um, so we, you know, we uh, we motored over to uh, the like lake exit. Except the lake exit was a lock. So you don't know what a lock is. It's like in uh, canals or whatever, so that the um, you, 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 they, they, uh, they basically make, though there'll be a height differential between, like, one side and the other side, so the river will be very difficult to, to traverse because it's flowing downhill, and uh, if you're trying to go uphill against that, like, good luck, and if you're trying to go downhill with it, then, like, the, uh, you're not gonna be able to, to slow down so much, you're not gonna be able to, like, control your boat very well, it's not gonna be very, like, safe consistent terrain you might uh you know run aground or whatever right like it's, it's not very safe right so there's, there's a, a height difference between one side and then the other side and uh like that's why rivers do their thing right but uh in these in these <clears throat> cases it's it's particularly bad um so then you get uh these canals put in which are man-made and have like a, a set depth uh, and they're flats and then you know you go from one side to the other of the canal and then there'll be locks at both sides <clears throat> and they run kind of like parallel to the river and uh, so these uh, these locks will be like dams and block off the water and then the water will get diverted towards the main river and not overflow into the canal so the canal itself is like very sedimentary water it's it's stale and like still and it's it's not moving very much so it's very easy to um motor through it or whatever because there's there, it's, the water isn't working against you right um and then you put these locks at both sides which have uh which are blocking the water and diverting the water towards the main river and um, you on one side, you will go down or up. Well, I guess you go the same way on both because you're like traveling. Anyway, on uh, on both sides will be these locks, and these locks um, have like a mechanism to raise and lower the water. So on one side of the canal, the water will be lower than the canal, and on the other side, the water will be higher than the canal. Basically. So you. Uh, you enter the lock on one side if you're going up 
and uh, the water will be lowered down to the, uh, you know, you might be in a river or in a different part of the canal. Um, and uh, the water will be lowered down to that so you can just sail in nice and easy. And, um, or motor in or whatever, right? And then uh, they'll like slowly kind of like pour in the water, depending on how big the boat is, I guess. Hopefully they're <laughs> respectful with it if it's a, if it's a smaller boat. Um, and uh, they'll let the water kind of pour in, which raises the water level in the lock, and that then pushes the boat upwards uh, as the water level raises the boat goes up with it because the boat is floating on top of the water, right? And um, then on the other side of the canal, you repeat it. And if you're going downhill, then you, the water would be raised to uh, whatever water height that you're at. And then they would release the water. And uh, you would get lowered down to the, uh, to the height at the other side. And then you'd be able to, to leave. So the, the water kind of like goes up and down depending on which direction you're traveling in, right? Um, and they're, they make traversing these... Uh, these rivers like substantially safer um, because you don't have like waterfalls and rocks and inconsistent terrain like it's it's you know everything that's happening and uh, as long as like nobody makes a mistake like a major mistake you're gonna be fine right um, so in these locks if you have a larger boat um, you typically like just kind of stay in them and then uh, use your uh, your motors to kind of like adjust with the water as it's coming in because the water floods in and even if they keep it slow it's gonna move your boat around a little bit because the water is you know flowing from one side to the other right and so it's gonna it's gonna push your boat around um, so if you have a larger boat, you typically use your motors to kind of like keep it stationary. Um, and if you have a if you have like a smaller boat, like a you know 27, 28 foot sailboat, like what I'm going to be buying and what I bought in my dream, uh, you can't really do that. You have one propeller, right? You don't you don't have even like anything remotely resembling like any kind of proper maneuverability in the water outside of like we can go forward <laughs> you know like that's you can go forward and you can change what direction forward is but like that's that's it um whereas uh, a larger boat might have uh something to assist in moving horizontally or whatever right um so uh on these smaller boats you would take a rope and you would uh loop it around what's called a bollard i believe uh, which is on the side of the uh, the lock and then you would basically hold it and like if you're rising you would continue to pull the rope in so that it's tight with you as you uh, as you ascend and your boat is kept kind of like against the wall stationary um, you'd have your your bumpers out to, to prevent it from like actually impacting your boat you might rip them or whatever if it's like super violent but that's better than <laughs> you know, destroying the side of your boat. Um, and, uh... If you're, if you're going down, then you typically do the same thing, except you just have to, like, let rope go. Right? So it's, it's a little bit easier that way. Um, but uh, you, you, you just basically loop the rope around. You do tie it to a cleat on the boat. Right? On, uh, on both ends, the front and the back. And, uh, you would, uh, then, like, connect it to the bollards so that you're being pulled towards it. Hopefully your boat is big enough to connect to two bollards. 27-foot boat, probably not going to be, or uh, long enough, rather. 27-foot boat, probably not going to be long enough to, to connect to two bollards. You're probably going to end up having to connect to one, and then it's kind of going to, like, pivot around that as the water flows in, which is a frustrating experience, I'm sure. Uh, anyway... So that's how the, uh, the, the the locks work, okay? So you enter them, you tie two ropes, well you don't really tie it, you just loop it around the, the bollard on, uh, on both ends of the boat, and uh, you kind of keep it 
stationary against the wall as the water floods in or floods out to uh, to prevent your boat from smashing you know other boats in the lock or just in general smashing into walls and stuff right um, to keep it mostly stationary inside the lock so in my dream we ended up getting up to this lock that was in this man-made lake where people were like selling boats <clears throat> for some reason in the Vancouver theme park yeah it, it, like we're already off to a rocky start it gets weird though okay so we uh we, we get into the lock and like I know how to use a lock and by the time I'm doing this I'll, I'll even like probably have had experience with it and like no better even um, but even still if we're like with other experienced sailors I'm probably gonna be like hey am I doing this right like can you just let me know if like I'm doing this right or if I'm doing something wrong or if I should change anything whatever like you know just to make sure that it's going right for the first time I'm in a lock if there happen to be other people around um, and in my dream I did that so I'm like hey uh, how are we supposed to, to do this we just you know loop the uh, the rope around the bollard and then just kind of like hold the boat in place right he's like no you have to tie it to the bollard and then tie it to the lips and I'm like what the heck's the lips <laughs> what like I, I haven't learned about lips yet um, and then he, he got mad at me for like not knowing what lips are and he, he points to the cleats on the boat and I'm like those are those called lips now I thought I thought they were called cleats and he's like no they're lips he was like really mad at me for for like you know taking this boat out when I don't even know what a lip is and a lip might be a thing on a boat but it's, it's not the thing that he was pointing at those were cleats um, maybe the, maybe that's another name for cleats I don't know but I doubt it I haven't learned it anyway so it was just it was just some weird dream thing anyway so we end up getting through the lock uh, and then on the other side of the lock we just like pick up the boat out of the water like this is like a 28 foot sailboat right like it's not a big boat but it's not a light boat either how much does a 28 foot cruising keel boat weigh 2800 uh, 28 foot cruising sailboat with a fiberglass hull um and this is a lighter sailboat was 4,500 pounds. So, so you typically look at like, I don't know, 6,000 to 9,000 pounds with like all the stuff on it. Like they're not light. They're not very heavy either, but like they're not light. Like a lot of the weight ends up being in the keel, um, which is like a very heavy bit stuck like deep under the water uh, to kind of keep it, to kind of like act as a lever if your boat is uh, going to capsize or whatever, because it'll kind of like pull it back down, right? Kind of keeps it straight up. Um, so they're they're not super light, right? But we just picked up this thing, which you know we'll we'll say is like seven thousand pounds, and just the two of us, and we're just like carrying it with just one arm, right? As we walk through this theme park, and like we're going on rides with <laughs> like carrying this twenty-eight foot sailboat, and uh, we're like just walking through the theme park. Uh, we stop in, like we go into a building. Like it's not fitting through a door. Okay, you're not you're not fitting. Uh oh. You're not you're not fitting a 28 foot sailboat through <laughs> through a doorway. Okay, like no. Um, but we did it, and then we took it downstairs into this like little like arcadey area, and we started to play like ice hockey, not not uh, air hockey and stuff, while we're carrying the boat. <laughs> like still carrying the boat. We're playing like all these games, um, in this like underground arcade. We had like these VR headsets on at one point and we're like doing all these games. We're still carrying this 28 foot boat and uh, we're just doing this stuff in this arcade. Finally we leave the theme park and uh, we go out to this uh, marina and, and we ask about uh, where we can leave our boat and, and like uh, get a get a liveaboard slip and we find a place we put the, we just put the boat down into the water like like we don't we don't like put it onto a thing that then no 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 we just like place the boat into the water you know like just down you go 
it's just <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened. And then uh, we got onto the boat and and we were uh, beginning to to like prepare to set sail. And then uh, at, at that point, I woke up and I'm like, "What the hell did I just dream?" Like start to finish, there was nothing about this that made a lick of sense. It was it was very very weird. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.